Hey guys, thank you for tuning into SimTech channel. On my previous tutorial on STM32 multiple external interrupt with a nuclear board here, I had this external hardware added to the system for my buttons and another one for the LEDs. This board is made with the Azotech IQS227, which is a single channel capacitive and proximity basically sensor. Now, this particular ball was very interesting because it's not a simple mechanical switch like these buttons here. Now, this is a touch and these touch buttons are powered with the Azotech IQS227. And when you flop the board around, you can see all the electronics that's going on behind this particular FR4 board here. So the purpose of this tutorial is indeed to try to get to the bottom of this particular PCB. Right, but before we do that, let's quickly, uh, briefly uh, look at the data sheet. So as you can see, it is a fully integrated self-capacitive sensor with dual output, that is a touch and proximity. It's got a sub 2.5 micro amps of current, so it's very, very low power and voltage operating range is 1.8 to 3.6, so critical for low voltage applications. Now, the applications in question will be your LCD. So this is what you will see on some of the uh, touch screen, touch devices that you find today in the market, LED flashlight, office equipment, and proximity detection enabled devices, and obviously replacement for electromechanical switches, just as we've done here in this application where we dish out these uh STM32 Nucleo mechanical switches to use the touch buttons here. So this is really a fully featured integrated circuit made by Azotech Semiconductor. Right now, when you scroll down into the data sheet here, you can find plenty of information on functionality and how you can integrate it into your circuit as I've done here. So this is a layout, right? The top view of the IC itself. Okay, so that's the IC we have in this board here. So you've got the T out, that will be your proxy, your touch out, and your P out is your proximity out. There is a ground. Now the CX is where your input is coming. Now remember, your finger here is your input touch into the device. So that's where your CX pad will be connected. Then you've got your VDD and the regulation. So there it is. And obviously, you're going to find a typical uh, schematic for a typical application. So that's the one I have implemented in this DIY PCB. Right now, let's go ahead and have a look at the schematic diagram. Right now, this is a typical application schematic for a single uh, integrated circuit. Now, as you can see on this board here, I've got more than one. I've got four of them that I have integrated in this board here. And I've got another small chop here, which is a voltage regulator. So when we open up the schematic for that board, so this is what we got here. Okay, this is a 3.3 uh, voltage regulator. As we've seen that the IQS227 is particularly a low voltage device. So I needed to convert the 5 volt into a 3.3 voltage regulator because the voltage I'm getting from the nuclear board here, obviously I'm tapping it from the five volt. I could have tapped it also from the three volt and directly feed it into the 3.3 volt array. It will still work just fine. Right now, in any case, if your only input source, your voltage source is five volt, then you will need a small 3.3 voltage regulator so that the IC can operate at optimum. Right now, the next thing is obviously this is a, a typical application. I've got my T out and the P out. Now I'm not making use of the proximity that will be quite handy for another application. And I've got my CX, which are basically my inputs here. Then the four buttons here that you can see, these are where my CX are connected on each one of the IC. Now, this small board here is like an evaluation kit made by Azotech Semiconductor, where you can basically just uh, break these like a bread and a piece of basket and implement these onto your circuit. Right, so let's move on to the next part of this uh, tutorial, which is the PCB layout. 
So that basically means once you've done your schematic, you move on to the PCB layout, which I've already completed here. As you can see, everything is arranged here exactly the way it is being represented here on this FR4 board. Right now, because this is quite a very low power device, as you've seen there, it's operate at a voltage range of 1.8 and 3.6 volt. So this means that the layout here must be done precise so that to avoid noise. Every low power application always suffer uh, with noise related problem. So that is why you see here I've made sure that everything is explicitly separated and we do not have any interferences. Now, if you want to make your applications uh, actually more robust, then you can add in a ground plane to basically eliminate some extra noises coming from different sources right as you can see it is exactly the same way we have it on the physical board here and if we flip this board and we can see that we've got it very very neatly done so this is quite a very simple application so it's either you can acquire yourself one of these small modules that is already pre-built laid out for you all you have to do is to basically just bring in your connections for power and obviously your touch out if you are working on a prototype application and you would like to implement some of these touch patterns onto your system please let me know on the comment section below i will gladly provide you with the Gerber's file for this particular board and you will be more than welcome to implement it on your system and if you find this tutorial useful, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Simtech channel. That would be highly appreciated. Thank you so much. Right, so this LED is just an indicator to indicate that I've got uh, power into this board here. So as soon as I touch, then I'm bringing a one LED on. Right, this is the multiple external interrupt program that is running on this board here. Now we've got our mechanical button as well that is still operating and I've got my multiple external buttons that can toggle all the LEDs. So these are all touch buttons as we've just discussed now and this is operating very very smoothly as you can see. So you can integrate these on your applications and have it working without any mechanical failures attached to the mechanical button that can wear. So the bottom line here is if you have an application where you need a single touch button and you want to do away with mechanical button that suffer ways and what have you, you can turn into the Azotech single channel capacitive and proximity sensor IC that will provide you the touching, right? The touch magic without any problem. So that is it what I wanted to demonstrate in this tutorial. If you find it useful, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Simtech channel. Until next time, cheers.